Hello, I'm Damien Barrett. Welcome to Access All Areas. And we are here thanks to Crypto.com. Momentum is king in 2022. Matthew Lloyd has become the essential AFL tool for victory. It has, Damo. It got Geelong a win on Saturday night. It got the Saints a win yesterday afternoon. And the Hawks nearly pinched a miraculous victory when they got the momentum over Carlton late mm. in that game. Yeah. We'll start with one aspect of the momentum out of round three, that being the Saints' big win against the, the, the Tigers. They turned around a 25-point deficit mm. in that third quarter to, to one of their very best wins of all time under Brett Ratton's coaching. Well, they got smashed. They got absolutely smashed by you know, a lot of people, and it was probably myself included in round one, when they, they looked one-paced against Collingwood, and Collingwood just blew them away. And then after half time, they got the better of Fremantle. And then same thing in this against Richmond. And it's good to see guys like you know, Gresham get involved. So his speed, yeah. and, and it's a pressure here. When they get in this mood, St Kilda at Marvel Stadium, they're, they're quite a hard stop, uh, side to stop. And Richmond, which overwhelmed after half time, they kicked... 60 points in a row, and it was only a Bolton goal late was their only score pretty much for nearly a half of football. Yep. So brilliant from St Kilda and Brett Ratton. And, and it was a, a beautiful mix. In, in, in order to get that momentum their way, it was this pressure which yeah. we're, we're highlighting now. It was also some running yeah. elements of their game, which after that round one game, when they looked so slow against mm. Collingwood, and, and people said, and myself included, there was a sameness attached to the team, that wasn't on show yesterday. They, they, they did look fast, but they were fast of mind. And look, there's a, there's a Bulldog special handball as part of this particular play, Lordo, which, you know, which went their yeah. way. But that's what they did. They took the game on. And you ask about where the leg speed is. You're seeing guys like uh, Gresham involved, Bradley Hill. I think Sinclair's been a massive air plus around the ball in the last couple of weeks. And then, to, good to see Brad Crouch playing some good football. You know, this run the overlap. Richmond just have no answers. You're waiting for it to stop. You're waiting for Cotchen to do something or yeah. a Bolton, but it just never changed. And, and, and then we'll talk about Maxi King soon. As a forward, your eyes light up when you're getting this momentum. But they're even switching the play, uh, making the ground big when they get possession of the footy. Mason Woods out on a wing. He was dynamic as well. And you can see Richmond alarm bells would be ringing uh, in the coaches' box and in the meetings because uh, it's happened to them against Carlton in round one and also against some Kilda late in games. It has, it has. Yeah. Um, Lotto, this play ends up in the, in the hands of, of that man there, Max King. We need to get to him. For the second week, he's kicked four goals for the match. But more importantly than the four-goal outlay in both of those games has been how those goals have come. Against Fremantle in round two, it was three goals in two and a half minutes mm. to end the third quarter to win that game. Yesterday, it was all four goals in the last quarter, six shots at goal in that last 30 minutes. He, he is taking over moments of games which ultimately affect the shape of the game. A lot of young players go to water when they aren't playing that well early in the game, but he has a really uh, you know, strong competitive streak. And he wants to be the best. I know when he did his knee demo, he wanted he was disappointed because he wanted to be the number one draft pick. So he wants to be the best player in the comp, and he wants it now. He's yep. not willing to wait you know, another 20, 30 games. And, you know, and I think that the great thing about him is Robbie Tarrant, he's a tough player to play on. Held him for three quarters, but then couldn't control him. Robbie Tarrant had no answers. Gibkiss, all yeah. those guys, once and killed, got on top in the game. He's reached um, the, the ability to kick four or more goals mm. on, on five occasions earlier than Buddy Franklin and Tom yeah. Hawkins and others who were, mm. who were celebrated. Four of those occasions have happened in the last seven games, yeah. and obviously the last two weeks. So he is tracking as well as anyone can and, at that age and stage. Yeah, and he's kicking much better. Yeah. And, and we all sort of remember he missed a year with a knee reconstruction, so only going to get better and better with time. Yep. Yeah. The Tigers are mm. a worry. They yeah. got their season on track with a win against GWS in, in round two, but were blown away in round one against the Cats. And their last quarters are, are obviously, and as was the case yesterday, a major issue for Damien Hardwick. It's the way, yeah, it's the way they're losing. They were overwhelmed by you know, Chera and, and uh, Kennedy and Cripps in round one. You see that contested possession. It's where it starts in the midfield. We're going to talk about momentum soon, and that's where it starts in the midfield. Clearances, 17-2, to 12-7, to 7, inside 50s. To, yeah, good luck trying to be a defender in that. And then scores 14 goals to two across two last quarters. Yeah. So, yeah, alarm bells massively at Tigerland. And their round one opponent yeah. obviously was Carlton, not, yeah. not Geelong. There, that, that's them leaving the, the field yesterday. What, what do you see now for the remainder? I, I'm, I'm still not going to write them off just yet, but something dramatic has to happen from here. Yeah, well, I always sort of, when you have success, uh, you sort of... You sort of don't get draft picks, access to good draft picks. And that's where I think Bolton and Bolter are, are so exciting and they can be elite All-Australian players. But after that, I don't see too much. And then you've got sides like, you know, Sydney, 
Uh, you know, even you know, St Kilda don't have a heat, but you mm. see like a Max King, Pushing what through. he what he does to you. He's a top four draft pick. Who at Richmond have been top fifteen? So that's you get your three premierships, mm. but once you you start to nosedive, you nosedive hard, and that's what's happened to clubs in previous. And I think it's looking like I tipped them eighth at the start of the year based on their preseason, mm. but I think that's probably as good as they could hope for now. Yeah, right. Yeah. In certain periods of this game's uh, evolution in history, Lotto, the games have been won by grind. Um, what we're seeing this year, I think more than even last year, is is the teams on a tear are getting the job done. And these are just a couple of random and, and I suppose, uh, isolated examples we've already seen. We've had two examples clearly out of the, the weekend just gone. We had another momentum shift in, uh, in a Hawthorne Carlton game, which we'll get to in a moment. But games are being won by surges of goals yeah. and, again, momentum being the king. Yeah, I think because, obviously, we have got the 6 6 6. Uh, and I think if you have got the dominance at the centre bounce, uh, you go into 1v1s in the forward line. Yeah, mm. and, and, and defenders can't really stop it. And I reckon we've also got coaches who are very set in their ways, yep. don't like to change things up too much. Uh, and, and that's where I reckon they've got to be probably more... Ad- I thought Craig McRae, for example, should have thrown Pendlebury back into the midfield nice and early, trying to get the shift back going yeah. their way when they lost momentum. And yet that was a reason they got 37 yeah, points up, wasn't it, true. by not yeah. having him yeah. in there. Let's get to a couple of new mm. coaches uh, who... Uh, or Actually, sorry, a game that played... was a great game yesterday, Blues and the Hawks. Michael Voss versus Sam Mitchell. And again, the momentum shifted uh, regularly in this game. The Blues kicked seven of the first eight goals. And this was a blitz in the first quarter. This is as exciting as you're going to see probably anything Carlton do for the last 10 years with what went on. Kicking long, midfield right on top. And it was sort of like in the schoolyard, just kicking the ball 20 metres out and flying for marks. And uh, Granger Barras was out of his depth up against Kerno. Cripps was pushing forward on Mitchell. I love this play, Lordo. Yeah. Terry, as you can see, t- yeah. takes, a, takes a, a, the option down the line. Um, from nowhere, Kerno comes and beats two opponents, two good opponents. And then... The non-percentage play is to go yeah. to a one-on-two, but it works because of the, the delivery. Yeah, that's right. And you've got players at their feet too at the top of the goal square. If he drops yeah. it, uh, would front and square and crumb. So, yeah, yeah, they were so dynamic and exciting to watch. But I, I, where the game did turn around is if you're not getting the ball in long and high, uh, yeah. sorry, deep, and this, they start rebounding hard because they weren't taking those marks after half time. And this is the end of the, the Hawks' run where they retrieved, not just retrieved the deficit, but actually went clear yeah. um, late in the game. And that man was as crucial as anyone, as he has been all three matches this year, Jack Gunston, to, to actually put them in, in front. You then had the, the frantic finish, and, and it required some luck in order for Carlton to, to hold on. And this was. Uh, as you can see, Gunston there taking that uh, taking that opportunity to get, again get it close, and then the I big the big names for the Blues stood yeah, up. I love this. What about the composure here from Sam Walsh? So there, there's a point in it. Uh, Walsh could have blasted it down the corridor. His vision to get that ball out to the Carlton player uh, O'Brien and obviously Doherty were out there, and then this it's hot again. Ball comes in. Jacob Weedering went about to talk to him. Absolute superstar. No McGovern, no McDonald, yet he saved them time and time again. He's just in the right spot at that yeah, crucial oh, yeah. moment. Oh, yeah. he, he's just... Uh, he plays like a 30-year-old, Jacob Wiedering. He's yeah. got the mature head on his shoulders and it's the reason he was the number one yeah. draft pick. Yeah. And well done to Bossy, 3-0. Yeah. Uh, that sets you up for a big season ahead. And great to see 66,000 yeah. attend that early Sunday match. Um, that was an easy game to watch. This one we're about to talk about wasn't as easy to the neutral observer. It was good for a Fremantle docker. The Derby over in Perth. They did a number on the Eagles, Lordy, not for the first time in yeah. 2022 as that happened to the to the Eagles. But Lockie Schultz had a good mm. game, didn't he? Ross Glenn, Denning, Manellis. Yeah, we'll talk about the sad state of affairs shortly at the West Coast Eagles, but you can only do what's, you know, beat what's in front of you. Uh, they were poor last week against St Kilda, and Lockie Schultz, he had 23 disposals and kicked two goals, and he's one of those players you just love to have on your team. You look at this pressure here. He just hunts and hunts. Michael Walters wins the ball, gets it back to Lockie Schultz and kicks the goal. So, um, yeah, they got the win. They, they belted them, which was good to see. Still no key forward dominating for them, but uh, the Smalls got to work, as did Brayshaw after halftime, who was tagged in the first half. And it's going to be a common theme that the season just slipping away from yeah. the Eagles for, for reasons that are largely and, and mostly out of their, their hands. It's slipping away, but it, it's, it's round three. Yeah. And they've only had six players who have played... Uh, three. All three games. So it's, it's as bad as it gets for a, a side three games into a season. Yeah, they, they still wanted to push up the ladder. Mm. Someone that had realistic expectations mm. on the year was North Melbourne, Lord but coming off a wooden spoon. But to hear the coach, David Noble, talk this way after their loss on the weekend, uh, I don't know where you go after this. It's pretty simple. Midfield got outworked. The defenders were poor. They let their man lead them to the ball and now forced him to play in front. It's, it was a really simple, basic game today that we let ourselves down enormously. And 
yeah, we should be embarrassed. That was after a 108-point loss to Brisbane Lions, Lord. It could have been a whole lot more, believe it or not, as, as bad as the 108 number was. They've only beaten West Coast in round two, lost to Hawthorne in round one, and there were things that happened in that game that disturbed David Noble, and I'd imagine you. Yeah, they conceded seven goals in the first quarter, and when you're non-competitive in the first quarter of round three, that, that, that's when you really concern yourself. They did lose Taron Thomas and Davies Uniac. just shows the lack of depth, the lack of talent. Even, you know, Jason Horn francis he's trying his guts out, but you don't want a young kid walking into a team and just being belted early because it sets in. Mm. The rot set in at the Gold Coast. A lot of players at the Gold Coast don't know how to win and don't know how to win consistently. Well, the same thing's happening to guys at North Melbourne. I'm a huge fan for David Noble. I love the way he speaks. Uh, obviously, I don't get to see what he does from week to week, but I think they have the right person Did. at the helm for where they currently are at. A development coach. I love the way he spoke after that game, and yep. hopefully, hopefully they get a response. He was week. at the Lions mm. in a footy yeah. role, a major footy role, when, when they had were going through the same period. Mm. Yeah. Um, and here we get to 2022, and, and they're as well placed as anyone for a crack at the flag, aren't they? Particularly with how their their forward line is now working. Yeah, I think they're there. The, if you give them a chance, they're as destructive as any team in the competition. They don't rely on any one player and anyone like McCarthy, Danaher, McStay, uh, Cameron. The list goes on and on. Uh, uh, Bailey. They've got superstars everywhere in that front half who will kick 23 goals if you give them a chance. Yep. Another horrif- harrowing loss was uh, felt by the Port Adelaide team, wasn't it, Lordo? 0-3 uh, and three after the, the three games. That, that coming in the, the showdown loss. I mean, Ken Hinckley, you, you, you feel for him now that he's in his 10th season of, of coaching, but it, it's a long way back for that, that club right now. Particularly with their next fortnight. It's Melbourne on Thursday night on the big stage. Thursday night footy. Look, they're shattered. Losing... Losing's one thing, but losing to your rivals in Adelaide's another thing when Adelaide are going to struggle this year. So next two weeks, they've got Melbourne and Carlton. Mm. But, you know, they've just got to um, you know, improve. Their midfield doesn't bat too deep. They're decimated in defence and their forward line hasn't got Charlie Dixon. But they've got to find a way to win and win fast, lose this week, and it's yep. season over. You mentioned Gold Coast a, a moment ago in the context of not knowing how to yeah. win. They had a winnable game against GWS and they, they lost again. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stephen Canelio for the, the Giants, we, we, we need to wrap him up yeah. because we'd scrutinised his uh, poor form in 2020 and 2021. He's... I won't say he's back to 2019 early and 2018 form, but it's, it's, it's getting there, Lotto. Yeah, I thought they couldn't have done much more. You know, people on wants to whack the, uh, the Suns and say, what did we get out of this game? But I thought the Giants were red hot early. Their pressure was much better. And Steve Canelio looked sharp again, nimble. Saw him as a junior under 18, and I saw why he got drafted early in the draft, because he was a super player. Um, he uh, yeah, can kick goals, can push forward, he's using the ball well, and we haven't seen this for years, so it's really pleasing for a guy who's been hit hard by the media as much as any player in the comp. Yep. The aesthetics of some games this year are, are just beautiful to watch, and, and we got it again on uh, the weekend with Geelong and Collingwood. Uh, Collingwood surging to a 37-point uh, clearance at one stage, and, and then lost the game quite uh, convincingly in the end. The momentum shifted again and, and again, similar to what happened with St Kilda with Max King, it was the big boy, Jeremy Cameron. Yeah, he, what a player he is and, and I know he's had a lot of rotten luck over his time, Jeremy Cameron, but he had the fire in the eyes and he, he, he goes, I want the ball coming to me and it's great when a player is in this situation. Like Max King was in that last quarter, Jeremy Cameron said, just get it to me. I'm not sure about some of the positioning of Collingwood, where they were just too far off Jeremy Cameron. You give him that time and space, he will hurt you. But It's I'll, proof that, yeah. that those guys just want the ball coming in. doesn't matter how it comes yeah. but they don't necessarily want it laced out, do they? they They'll want, get to it. All they want is a one-on-one chance, yeah. and they will do the rest for you. And he's also a beautiful kick for goal, is Jeremy Cameron. Yep. It was extraordinary to weigh this momentum change in this game, and it was done, as it often is, out of the centre, yeah. Lordo. Geelong structured up well, and Collingwood didn't when the pressure was at its highest. This is what fans at home should be watching for. How are our team going in the centre bounce? And I used to think forwards were the most important players in the game. They're not. It's centre bounces. And you lose momentum in here, it's very, very hard to stop. This is what I talk about coaching. You can see momentum changing. Get your, get your best in there. That's and you're referring to Liberatore right here. Now, now, this clearance in inverted commas wasn't a great no. one, but but he was in the middle for the start of the play, which meant he was in the middle for the next play, yeah. and, and then he was clear again. And I think coaches sometimes outsmart themselves. Uh, you get players to their strengths, play players to their strengths, get Libra in there as much as you can. If you need Pendlebury in there, get him in there, uh, and I think that's where the best coaches do it. They can adjust on the run and make quick decisions, yeah. even if it's only for a 10 or 15 minute period. And back to the initial part of that conversation, Craig McRae will learn a lot he out will. of that, won't he? Yeah, he, he yep. will for sure. Yep. Yep.
He's going to have to learn how to play without Jordan Ngoi for the first time in his short uh, time as coach. Uh, after this was adjudicated by the match review office as being worthy of one week. And, but I, I'm in agreement with that decision. Don't you feel gets up? But this action is the action they are trying to stand Yeah, out. we're looking to change behaviours. And I think Collingwood should just put their hand up and say, yeah, it was a slinging motion. Didn't need to do it. And he gets the week he deserves. Yep. Our brave play of the week, thanks to Crypto.com, this week is Marcus Bontempelli. We could probably put him in every single week, Lotto. We've done it this week for... You can see the score. Uh, they're protecting a 12-point lead. The Swans kept coming. He's on Warner, effectively, at that centre clearance and loses centre clearance, but he hasn't given up. The ball comes into the Swans forward line. Bont is still running hard. You're about to see him come from right of screen to basically kill the chance that the Dogs had to mark this goal, mark this ball about 15 metres out. We talk about midfielders who only want to run one way. Well, that's as good as... That's why he's the captain of the club and that's why he's the most inspirational player at the Dogs with a big play like that. Yep. Well, thanks, as always, for your thanks time so on much. Access All Areas. Uh, another episode of AFL Exchange will drop tonight. AFL Daily every morning from 7.30 or so on. AFL.com.au. We'll be back next week with more Access All Areas.